So I recently hit S rank in Splatoon 3. I don't really know how well that stacks up, but I'm pretty proud of the milestone. Especially because Splatoon 3 was my first time playing a Splatoon game. I kinda bought the game on impulse, um, started playing as soon as it was released, and then I just sort of kept playing, and then late last season I hit S rank. So what is this video going to be about? Well, it's mostly going to be about documenting the journey here, talking about what the game was like as a new player, and how I grew and developed as a player to the point where I'm at now, mostly just because I feel like there could be some value in recording what the game was like from a new player's perspective. So let's start with Drizzle Season. As I mentioned, I did start playing at launch, and I even remember my very first match. It was Wahoo World, and someone disconnected at the very start. Certainly a bit of foreshadowing for how things would be, especially in the early months of the game before they mildly improved the netcode. Other than that, I spent a lot of my first days playing with another friend who had a little more experience than me, which, you know, playing with a friend always improves the game and helps take the sting off some of your losses. But really, most of my time in the start of the first season was spent working on the hero mode. It was a great time, and it gave me some opportunities to get used to a lot of things, like aiming with the motion controls, movement mechanics, stuff like that. Fundamentals that, while not enough to carry me through multiplayer on their own, are really essential starting points. Of course, I did still play some multiplayer, and when I did, there was what I will call the noob meta that was quite dominant. This noob meta is pretty much defined by the fact that both the people using it and being defeated by it had basically no skill at the game. And that does, of course, include me at the time, too. Don't get me wrong. First, and probably most infamously, we've got the Aero Spray, which has its incredibly high rate of fire, which, combined with its poor accuracy, results in a weapon that doesn't really require you to aim much, which is a huge help when you are new and can't aim, and when your opponent also can't aim well enough to shoot you before you get in close enough to splat them. Plus, its painting ability means it's actually okay in turf war, making it just generally a difficult weapon to fight against for a new player, although thankfully it doesn't really stack up at higher skill levels. And the other new meta weapon is the Splat Roller. Now, this is a bit of a better weapon than the Aero Spray, but it was certainly annoying to deal with as a new player. Between the one-shot ability and like with the Aero Spray, it benefited greatly from no one being able to aim. I remember a lot of difficulties when I was still new to the game, just dealing with rollers that would you know, roll over me. Yeah, it's something that's pretty ineffective now, but when you're new and you can't aim and have no game sense, that stuff can be really annoying. Because these weapons were so dominant and I found them so annoying to fight against at the time, they ended up really influencing my early weapon choices. As fans of my old GBO2 content might recognize, I'm not really one to follow the meta, even a noob meta like this. Instead, I went with counterpicking and finding ways to shut down what existed as the meta. So in Splatoon 3, I wound up focusing on mid-range shooters such as the Splattershot Pro and the Squeezer. I had a lot of fun using these weapons, and they helped make me a better player, and, you know, helped me learn to aim. Things did change a bit with the first Splatfest, though. I think there was a bit of a loss of population of the new players, either that or just I started getting unlucky with Turf War's lack of matchmaking, because I sort of went on a losing streak after the first Splatfest, and since for whatever reason I didn't have the confidence to start ranked yet, I went and got a job at Grizzco. I would basically spend the remainder of the season playing more Salmon Run than anything else. 
I played so much that I pretty much completed every single rotation for a good stretch of time and eventually worked my way up to executive VP. By the time of the first big run, I was good enough that I was able to scrape into the top 50%. Maybe not the best result, but I'm pretty proud of it for someone who, again, had been playing for three months at this point. And overall, Grizzco just gave me a place to hone my general skills such as movement and aiming, and just to keep me playing Splatoon 3 without going into turf war and fighting teams of S-ranked players because that's how the matchmaking can be sometimes. And that brings us to chill season. As I mentioned, there was the big run at the start that I participated in and greatly enjoyed, but after this, Combined with a few bad weapon rotations, I was starting to get a little burnt out on Salmon Run. Fortunately, around this time, between the new weapons, watching a bunch of videos on the game, and just generally being in the mood, I guess, I started getting into ranked at this point. And as it turns out, I quickly ended up preferring it to Turf War, not just because of the actual matchmaking, but because of the game modes. After a while, the lack of an objective meant that I actually kind of dreaded Splatfest forcing me into Turf War. Though that said, Tricolor Turf War was still great, partially because it added the objective and partly just because it's such dumb chaotic fun. At some point in the first half of the season, I decided that I would try out basically every weapon. And while in the end I didn't use all of them, I did try quite a few of them, grinded them up to the first level of freshness, and then used the Sheldon license I got from that to purchase a new weapon. And then repeat until I have every weapon in the game, or had at the time. But eventually I did decide it was time to get serious and focused, so I picked a handful of weapons I liked and started working on gear for them so that I could both look good and have effective builds for the weapons I would use most. It got to the point where in February I used a grand total of three different weapons all month. With the Splatana Wiper mostly carrying me through A rank, although the Rapid Blaster got me into S rank. Oh, and also at some point in all this, I wound up getting really into Clam Blitz. It's a mode that's really hard to get into when you're new, but once you do get into it, it's pretty fun, and plus I think it tends to have the best map versions of pretty much any of the modes. But that digression aside, what's next? That's a good question, honestly. I would like to get into S rank, although first, since the season has changed, I gotta get back into S. Eventually, I would even like to do X battles, but that's a long ways off. From my brief experience in S rank, my abilities are sort of in a weird place. I feel like A rank matches are just a little too easy for me, but my experience in S ranked matches have been mostly defeats. And while there are a few new weapons that are pretty interesting, most of them aren't that exciting to me. Sure it would be nice if we got even just one more Kraken and Super Chump weapon, and maybe some kits for weapons other than shooters, because I've already got a shooter or two that I really like. Looking further into the future, it'd be pretty cool if I could someday actually play competitively. I doubt I'll ever have the abilities or really the mindset for it, but hey, I can dream, right? And then lastly, I definitely want to make more Splatoon content. Somehow the video of me hitting S rank got 2,000 views. And just in general, I've been playing a lot of Splatoon lately, and hey, with me slowly breaching into S rank, maybe I'm at least a little qualified to talk about the game and vaguely know what I'm saying. So yeah, look forward to more of that, I guess, and thank you for watching. Oh, and I'm also going to need to figure out how I'm supposed to sign off from these videos, but this one we're just going to trail off ominously.